Hello, um, my project is a photographic project. It is about a city. Probably no one ever heard about it, and I never heard about it. I was just passing by in a car. It was simply a touristic trip to Elbrus, one of the highest peaks in Europe, if not the highest. And we passed by this town. It took us literally five minutes. But I was stunned. I loved it so much. You know, it looked as if time has stopped there since the Soviet Union. Literally. Time stopped and nothing ever changed. I asked our driver, what's this town? Like, can we stop there? She said, no, there is absolutely nothing. We can't stop there and it's pretty dangerous. This region is in top five most dangerous regions in Russia. He was like, you should stop at only touristic places. Don't go there. I said, okay, fine but I still wanted to go back. And I still knew that that is the place that I really want to do my project about. And I was right. When I came home and I Googled the name of the place, the name is Turnaus, and it's translated from local language as Canyon of Winds. The place has a fantastic story. It was built from zero in the Soviet times. There was um, a factory and mines for tungsten. So the town was built only for workers and their families. And the infrastructure was fantastic. There were schools, kindergartens, cinema, theater, um, sports center, swimming pool, and even an entertainment <coughs> park, which in Soviet times is pretty cool. And on top of that, the pay was super high. So everyone wanted to work. And what happened next? Next, the Soviet Union collapsed, and it all ended. There was no more work, there was nothing to do, and people started leaving, and they kept leaving ever since. And then in uh, 2001, I think, there was a massive flood, and it destroyed half of the city. Eventually, so the people that left there were left to survive. And when I went there, I thought it would be a dramatic story. But in fact, what I discovered, it wasn't a drama at all. When I met the people that lived there, I was absolutely stunned how, first of all, they were so nice. They helped me so much. They were so happy that someone came and is going to do a project about them. I knew I didn't want to be a simple, you know, any other digital reportage <coughs> about a place where you go, you just take pictures of destruction and you come back and say, oh, that's such a drama, it's so awful. No, I wanted it to be a piece of art. I wanted it to be a documentary, but at the same time to capture the history, to capture it in detail. So that is why I chose not only analog camera, which I find, maybe it's my personal opinion, but I do find this instrument more artistic than digital cameras. I chose a large format camera to show you how it looks. It looks like this. It's a pretty heavy thing. Uh, it alone weighs like four and a half kilos with a tripod even more. And you can take only around, I could take only maximum 12 pictures a day, but I usually did around eight simply because to set up this thing for one single shot, it might, might take up to an hour easily. <laughs> yeah, I will show you. This is the size of the negative. Yeah. <laughs> so first, you shoot it, you don't know what comes out. You wasted an hour and you don't know if it ever will turn out well. <coughs> then you go home, I went home, I went to the hotel because my dad said that I should not stay in this region, I should live in the region nearby. So each day it's two hour away. <laughs> and I'm going back to the hotel, I'm waiting till the sunset because I don't want any light leaks in my bathroom. My mom outside sitting timing me, and I'm developing in the tank in the bathroom, which is like two sizes of, <laughs> of this table. It was absolutely crazy, but it was, I tell you, it was the best experience of my life. And I'm really happy to share the results with you. So, we are starting with the entrance to the city. It's named Turnaus in Russian, it's written. We moved a bit in, here are the miners. Soviet art already beginning. 
even more Soviet art, entrance of the city, and look at this detail on the building. And now you imagine why I wanted the matrix of my camera to be this big, to have all the smallest details there. <coughs> Another Soviet art thing, the abandoned swimming pool. Of course, Lenin. We can't go without him. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> and he's big. And there is an even bigger one in the city. <laughs> this is the central part, the stadium. It's called Labor. <coughs> this is the entrance and the promotion of chess playing, you know, sports and culture. They always went together and intellectual development. It is extremely Soviet. <laughs> This is the stadium, people running there. There are a few people, but still their main thing is to go in the evenings and play football. So the stadium is not in the really best condition, as you can see here. The benches are not exactly like Olympic Games, but, but still, as long as it keeps people happy. Um, it's a detail of the fence, and it's written, ready for work and labor. Oh no, sorry, ready for work and defense, yeah, so, never forget about this. It's an entrance to the sports school, and what is also special about this town, it's tiny, literally, three, uh, three streets, not more. However, um, it has a lot of sports talent, especially in greco roman wrestling which you could never guess. But in the Olympic Games in London, the third place was taken by a man from the city. And they won a lot of medals and a lot of competition throughout the years. That's surprising. Uh, this is the director of the stadium and a bit of wrestling going behind him. Uh, these guys are not locals. These are special forces, and they're being sent to the city to be trained there. Because at this altitude, where the city is, the training is proved to be much more effective. And they have fantastic air, it's beautiful there. They have mountains where they can be trained, actually. They can't be trained like this in the city. So. Now, we move a bit into personalities. This woman was in the government back in the Soviet times, and she had a pretty high position. And she hasn't, she hasn't left, she's still there. This girl is 16, and she's already working at a coffee shop in the town with her mom. He is an art collector, and behind him are the paintings by local painters. What he does is he supports the local artistic talent by buying their art. And it's his little grandson. This is the painter, one of the painters, but I only met one. He's a fantastic person, I should tell you. He has this amazing energy, which transfers into his paintings. And I'm really sad that he's not known worldwide because he really deserves it. Entertainment, very Soviet, from Soviet times. You see all those buttons? I don't know how it doesn't break, but people still do use it. <laughs> you see, they're going there. <laughs> um, this is not bombings. This is not war. This is people taking apart the buildings to build something on their, like, in their own houses. <laughs> yes. Uh, there. You see a bit of the letters, it's written, Equality, Fraternity, Freedom. Now we go a bit into the mountains. This is a view on the lowest part of the factory, where tungsten was processed. You see, again, this is not a war. For 20 years, people are going and disassembling little by little, and still, more than 20 years on there, still is stuff left. Can you imagine that? It's crazy. And I couldn't take pictures of them, but I met 16-year-old boys who were going in a car in the mountains to take out the building material. They are storing them after, uh, the material afterwards and selling it. And that's how they earn money to 
take their girls out. <coughs> this is the top of the mountain, the very top. <coughs> the painter that I showed you before, he worked in, as he said, is it was something artistic connected to the factory, so probably you know this a bit of propagandistic art, Soviet art. That's what he was doing. It's not really what he loves to do, but it's his hometown and he was employed there. Maybe even this piece of art in the <coughs> corner is by him. I don't know, but it's still there. I guess no one wants to, to disassemble this house yet. But we'll see what happens 20 years on. This is this, the warehouse. Um, it was a warehouse before and now it's just material where these little boys take this material down there and from there there is a guy who actually set, resells the material to other cities. So it's not for, only for local use but it's a way to earn. This woman, she helped me so much with this project. She was actually the first person I met there. And when she saw my old camera, not the big one you saw there, I had a small one. She's like, wow, what is that? I said, well, I want to do a project about your city. She was so excited and through her, I met all the other people that you saw. And she, she's, extre she's extremely nice. I, I cannot, you cannot imagine how warm and nice people are there. Um, I can't, I can't really exaggerate, but still. Um, she is sitting, it's, it's not just, you know, just a construction. She's trying to build there a real European coffee house. She wants people to come in the morning to have a cup of coffee with a croissant and enjoy life, yes. So he, she and her mom bought out this uh, little place and now she's trying to build her dream there. And yes, and some of the materials she uses is actually from the factory. <laughs> That's the end. Do I have more, a bit more minutes? So since I have a bit more time, I would really like to thank everyone without whom this project would not happen. Some of those people are not here, but still, I would love to say thank you to my mom because she followed me everywhere. My dad said, you're not going. <laughs> I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and since I'm his only child, I'm a girl, and this is a dangerous place. He still let me go, and I'm forever grateful for that, and he financed it. So <laughs> that, that is also an important part. He said, you're not going without your mom. I was like, gosh, my mom is coming with me. But eventually, she turned out to be the best assistant I could ever wish for. <laughs> I also am extremely grateful to my boyfriend, who was a great moral support. I was freaking out every single day. And he was there to tell me, you're going to do great. And he helped me to get the camera. And <clears throat> last but not least, I would like to say a huge thank you to the head of our photography department, to my photography teacher, Francesco Rezzi Visconti, because without him, first of all, I wouldn't have photography in my life. I wouldn't know what what an amazing thing it is and how much you can do with it. I wouldn't have large format photography. And thank you very much for introducing me to that and without that I wouldn't be able to do the project and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.